When we talk about The Sims as an entertainment platform driven by our community, it's because we see the future of The Sims as more than any one title. Sims 1, 2, 3, and now 4 have always been the way going from generation to generation of their franchise. When they feel it's been enough time, technology has advanced along with other reasons. This has always been the way. I state this to show how people were expecting a Sims 5. I got a comment saying we were all Delulu for thinking Sims 5 was coming, I hate that word, but that's what the comment said, that we were all Delulu, delusional, thinking Sims 5 was even coming as no one had stated that. I didn't think it was necessarily coming right away, but I think most of us either thought it was eventually coming or Project Renee, which I'll talk about soon, was going to be Sims 5. I don't think it's surprising though that most people were expecting a Sims 5 eventually. I didn't necessarily think Project Renee would be Sims 5, but I definitely expected one eventually. Project Renee is Sims' latest work in progress. They have showed it off a few times and a lot of people suspected it was Sims 5, but I would say overall I didn't want that as some of the gameplay promises seemed a bit crappy for Sims 5. But yes, they have stated this is not The Sims 5, but rather a separate side project. But this isn't what the article is referring to. It is instead stating there is no plans of making one ever or at least in the direct future. Now, this isn't inherently wrong. The Sims is over $1,000 and a lot of people put effort into their save files, stories, lore, Sims, builds, etc. So of course, expecting Simmers to lose thousands of dollars and all their beloved Sims wouldn't be nice. But here seems to lie the biggest issue. Sims 4 is overly hated. And I don't mean overly hated too much, I mean, I would say it's pretty justly hated, and it's overly hated in the sense that most of the community low-key hate The Sims 4. It's honestly, I would say, the most hated era of the franchise. From the lack of working packs, to extreme bugs, to people like me just not wanting to play live mode anymore. Now I have a lot more to talk about in regards to The Sims 4, poor state, but I believe the reason this could kill The Sims isn't the lack of linear stories anymore, e.g. The Sims 5, but more what era they've decided to leave it on, and I'll explain this further as we go on with the video. Packs like Dine Out, My Wedding Story, Get to Work, Tend Not to Even Work, and they need refreshes basically right now. Plenty of bugs are present, and being 10 years and $1,000 into The Sims 4, but so much still being wrong does absolutely suck. While I'm aware of certain things like laundry lists being released and Sims saying they are planning on fixing bugs, there is just so much wrong already. Like first off, I would stop releasing unfinished packs and finish them a year later and just release well-made packs worth Sims money. I mean, if you think about it, My Wedding Story's Got a Fix made it semi-playable, but it released ages ago. Don't release packs unfinished, not playtested, and then leave it up to Sims to make mods to fix packs until you finally decide to do it. Instead, release packs well worth Simmers money and even if they have a little bit of glitches, I think the community will be happier knowing that you tried your best and are still working to make it 100% playable. I think a big problem people have is wanting open worlds or neighborhoods along with cars or things like lots up against each other and none of this can be done with the way things are coded. Things that people would be hoping were in The Sims cannot be included in The Sims 4 and I think a lot of people understood that but were having hopes that it would potentially be in Sims 5. I heard a lot of people say, I want open Open worlds, I understand it cannot be doable in The Sims 4, but I have high hopes for Sims 5. So I think this is the biggest issue. A lot of people do have huge complaints with The Sims 4, and they were kind of hoping that a lot of it would be fixed in The Sims 5, and to hear that there is no Sims 5 definitely dented a lot of people's perception on how The Sims 4 should be acting then. I definitely think a lot of people think if you're going to be removing the ability to have a Sims 5 and fix potential issues and create a better, newer game, people expect The Sims 4 to be a lot better than it currently is. I also wanted to quickly talk about the fact that, like Project Renee, Sims do plan on making other games, just not necessarily a predecessor to Sims 4. This could be a great thing such as multiplayer games, but they put a lot of effort and care into it because they don't have to worry about it being in addition to single player, so a game could be strictly multiplayer and only people who want that could buy that. Things like this or a medieval game could be great spin -off. They can put a lot of effort into it and then only those people who want it will buy it. This is perfect because Sims can't put a lot of effort into, say, a medieval expansion pack because it's not worth it because not every Sim is going to want that, but they can put full effort into a medieval game spin-off. But of course, that's just one example. There are many, many possibilities with this. But it could also go bad. If people hate it and slowly start being sick of the sims and its issues leading to people boycotting any sims content then they'd have nothing and could possibly even be forced to a sims 5 just so they can stay afloat the act of sims 4 not slowly dying out to the eventual sims 5 is not a terrible thing in theory i mean think of many other games every year a new f1 game comes out the same with basketball or football or whatever games having multiple generations isn't something different or new but that doesn't mean it's a good thing it's pretty well known people aren't fond of games constantly making full new games for slight changes that could have happened 
in an update, such as F1 Manager 2022 being so similar to F1 2023 Manager, but Sims is different, I would argue. Sims 3 isn't the same as Sims 4 with small changes. While yes, some packs or content is similar, and yes, a lot of people will say it's a downgrade, I'd confidently say we moved to The Sims 4 because Sims 3 became glitchy, had issues, and the graphics were definitely outdated. Now, yes, you can state Sims 3 should have been updated and made modern, and that's fine. I would say how The Sims moves from generation to generation, now being on Sims 4 to Sims 5, etc., wasn't a bad idea, especially if it's used to give players things they want that they can't be achieved, for example, in The Sims 4. Open world, better graphics, ability to build your own map, etc. This is why I feel like there needs to be a Sims 5 that players want. My guess is EA knows how expensive Sims 5 could possibly be to make, and they're making so much with Sims 4, what's the point? But of course, that's just my opinion. Another guess would be they want to leverage Sims 4's success and make fun of spin-off games using that money. But honestly, I don't know, but to me, it's not the smartest decision. I definitely think that Sims 4 has so many flaws that I would suggest if you're going to stop making linear stories, I would personally stop with Sims 5. Sims is now free to play which possibly controversially I don't love. I don't dislike it because I want it to be expensive so people can't play but more because why I believe The Sims did it and made it free to play was to jump on microtransactions and timed events. Think Fortnite, Overwatch, your favorite free to play game and I guarantee they do this as well. I'd argue this is even worse though because in those games you're usually paying for skins, things you don't need and won't downgrade your playing experience such as if you ignore a timed event you just won't get a cool skin skin, but in The Sims 4, you're kind of losing things that are a bit better than that. The Sims is so hard to play without any packs, especially if you don't have access to CC and mods. I wish they would pump more into base game, making it worth buying instead of just making it free to play. While I do appreciate if you have CC and mods, you can enjoy The Sims pretty well for free. I just feel like we're going down a bad free to play path. That doesn't seem great for the franchise. But that could also just be being salty about these timed events that I really don't want to do. As someone who did pay for the game, I feel pretty cheated. And while I'm not a Against the Sims being free to play, I hate that they're kind of using it to now promote kits and these timed events where if you don't get on The Sims every day, for example, for that set period of time like they did last time, you wouldn't get an item or a trait, which is like some gameplay experience they're taking away. I also want to talk a bit about a comment and add my opinion. So this comment stated that live Sims games will be fine without Sims 5, but EA might not. Well, that's the summary of what they said. I'll put what they said on screen, but I totally agree. Live Sims will be fine, especially since we have two great games coming, that being Inzoi, perfect for more realistic players, then Paralives, a cute cartoony take on life sims. And I don't doubt that there are more life sims coming and we will hear more about them in the coming years. I think players will truly be fine, but I definitely think EA needs to, to sort out their plan in Sims 4 if they want to keep their life simulation area of the company alive. But EA has no problem tanking games, so I don't know if they actually care what happens. They could very well think Sims is doomed and merely want to milk it for as long as possible. And to me, I wouldn't be shocked if they just continued to put out mediocre spin-offs and games in order to really milk everything they can out of that part of the company to make as much as you want. This is a big reason to go on a bit of a tangent why I love indie games so much. I feel indie games like Paralives for example, they are made from people who love games. They love Paralives, they love life simulators and they make it out of passion. EA, while you can say that Sims employees might love The Sims and I'm very well saying that is the case and I'm sure that there are some Sims employees who are ride or die Sims fans, I do not doubt that, but you cannot tell me that EA CEOs and higher-ups who are in charge of finance and are getting the big bucks in their pocket care about gaming at all. I wouldn't be surprised if none of them have even saw The Sims or watched it or played it themselves. They are merely just trying to funnel it because they know it is a good way to get money as Simmers are very diehard and are willing to buy a lot of packs. I did want to talk about one last thing in regards to my opinion about Sims before I talk about other people's opinions. I think Sims should have celebrated Sims 4's 10 year anniversary. It just comes off as they don't care about The Sims, especially since sure, maybe in the past they didn't care about specific sim games birthdays but if the sims 4 is going to be their main game for years to come show a little bit of support maybe even literally as little as a thank you to the players like me and the others who have supported the game for 10 years i purchased it in i believe 2014 when it came out as did a lot of people i know who love the sims and i feel it's almost a spit in our face to not even say a thank you and then to come right out and say i know a lot of you are unhappy with the state of our franchise i know a lot of you 
are unhappy with the fact Sims 4 is going to be our main game, but we are not going to say thank you. It just feels like huge spit in the face. Like at least a thank you to the fans who have bought packs, the fans who have supported you through everything, and the people who still, like me and other creators who make videos about this game, and especially people who watch it, people who go and play it after, people who buy packs, people who have supported it, whether even they just play for free. A little bit of a thank you could go a whole long way, maybe even just like a simple free item or just an article saying thank you but not a peep you don't say a single thing about sims 10 yet and then you come right out and say oh sims 4 is gonna stay you're all wanting sims 5 because our game sucks but it's staying you'll be fine it's it's beyond ridiculous really i asked my followers on insta if they thought the direction of sims is bad and if you'd like to be involved with polls like this in the future make sure to check my community tab and also follow me on instagram my community is primarily sims fans and of course it's only a few sims fans in the scheme of things i still appreciate and like getting my followers involved and gauging their opinions most people do say it's going to be in a bad direction but if i put it on screen at the current point in time Yes has 43 and 57% say no. So about 12 people reckon that Sims is going in a good direction with the way that they're going about Sims 5 and the lack of it. While 16 people believe they are not doing well and why are the Sims doing this? And it, I even got a DM of someone explaining their thought process. This person said, for real though, how could you think releasing an expansion pack a month and making your game worth over a thousand with stuff that should entirely have been main game is a good idea to then notice how high the demand for a sequel is to then never make it happen and why to keep releasing one expansion a month so that the game can eventually be $2,000. The marketing department should be studied. So basically, yeah, what? it's such a high demand for a sequel. Why are The Sims doing this? A and I completely agree. I also wanted to go ahead and just read a few comments from my Instagram and TikTok because I did make a post about this a little while back when they first announced that The Sims 5 was not going to be a thing. And I wanted to read a few comments to kind of get a gauge on what some of the community might be feeling about this. Someone said, as much as I would love a Sims 5, I started to think about it more when I found out and it makes sense and I respect their reason. Because looking at the graphics for Sims 4, it's not dated graphics, at least to me. I personally haven't experienced many breakdowns of packs. The one I have worked, fine. And I'm enjoying it. The worlds I shape and the stories I tell through my streams when I go live, depending on how Sims 5 differs, I would probably still play Sims 4 for a long while. Like how I play Sims busting out between Sims 3 and played Sims 3 a bunch until I got Sims 4. Sims 4 was such an enhancement that I dropped Sims 3 in brackets mainly because I don't know where my copies of it are anymore. So that is fair. I, I definitely think the main reason people would stick to The Sims 4 are there's two reasons. I think it's either you've spent so much on The Sims 4, you are not willing to make that commitment to a new game, or two, you just love your story so much. And I do think that was primarily possibly a reason Sims 4 decided against making a sims 5 was because they see how many simmers you know like you look at my save file i'm working on i have so much love for it and i want to finish it and honestly even if sims 5 came out next year i still would have worked until my save file was complete because i love it i'm proud of the law i'm proud of it and i would want to play in it so i think a lot of ea and sims i want to say maybe realized that people would want to stick to the sims 4 at least play them in tandem because they love their story so much there's a lot of mods in cc there's a lot of pre-built stuff under the sims 4 i personally still would have got sims 5 and i probably would have played them in tandem for a while as i did with sims 3 when sims 4 came out there was a lot missing like toddlers pools being able to lock doors there was a lot that i hated that was missing especially as a family gameplay little like 10 year old me or something was really offended that i couldn't have toddlers so i literally like 10 year old me was like I'm, I'm a boycott the sims until toddlers come out and I played the sims 3 so I would have played them in tandem until sims 5 had everything that I wanted in a game so I do understand their point of view and I think that's fair enough someone said I don't want a sims 5 I want a sims that does what it's supposed to do and doesn't need mods to make the game enjoyable and functional in sims cases I swear to god fair I, I agree I think the only way to do that though would be a sims 5 would be my would be my opinion. I just feel like Sims 4 is so heavily broken. I don't know what you would do. Someone said, no, it won't kill it. We don't need a Sims 5. We need a complete Sims 4. Fair enough. Someone said, unpopular opinion. They need to hire new people. Many game companies are doing the same. Not gonna lie, EA is sort of on a downward spiral, prioritizing heavily merchandised games that are online only. They killed the Sim City series and now getting rid of Sims 5 is so meh. Part of the new Sims version versions is it supposed to give ea the chance to redo and build upon concepts before i i understand their reasoning i do i don't know if necessarily firing ea employees is the way to go because 
I don't truly know. I feel like this is more of an EA decision or a up higher Sims team mug decision and I also agree on the statement like I think I stated before in the video that it's not to just repackage the same game and put a new price tag on it it's the reason old sims games you know got bigger was better graphics and to build upon concepts we haven't explored so it would have been great to see sims 5 be fully open world and you know have realistic elements but still that cartoony feel of the sims add some lore from like bella goth and interesting stuff like that and then it also would have been so fantastic to see things like building your own maps cars back all that kind of stuff i feel like they could have done all of that with sims 5 if they were building off concepts they love and concepts that they knew players love but they chose not to do that and I think that's a big reason it will end up being a downfall for the sims not even because sims 4 is bad but because there is so much players want in a game that now you are basically saying we can't give it to you because we're not we're not doing a new new linear story which is unfortunate so other comments said someone said I do like it too and I have brought the like more than half the packs and when I first found out about the sims 5 I was like sigh let me get my credit card but yeah there is a lot they could work on which is so true I think this was a big thought for like me and a lot of other people who have especially invested heavily into this game I have bought every single pack not including the kits that is like over a thousand I believe uh that is a big investment that you're asking me to drop and move on to another game would I have done it if the game was superior yes I have bought plenty of games that I've played through once and never played again I'm not against it while this is the most I've ever spent on a game and I would say it's a bit embarrassing <laughs> I've spent so much uh, I do make videos that is my only justification of it is that I make videos on it but I would say it does feel like a really big investment to ask someone to drop a game they've spent so much time on, so much money on, so much so invested in, and you're asking them to move to a different game. I think that is a big thing a lot of people thought was like, oh my god, here we go. Now I have to drop another 1000 on a new game. So I, I also understand that point, and I am a little bit grateful that I don't have to do that in the near future, but... I, I do think there's a lot I want from The Sims 4 that we don't have. Someone said, I really don't like The Sims 4 and I hate EA for cancelling The Sims 5. I had high hopes that the new game would be better than its predecessor. And that is that is very fair. Someone said, I hate it unless they make The Sims 4 with more pack refreshes, give it a whole new engine, more personality and make open world. I don't know what they can do. They keep piling faulty code on the game. I a hundred percent agree i think this is such a huge factor of the sims it was built on faulty code i remember someone explaining that it was originally meant to be a multiplayer game like an online experience but then i think that went wrong with a different game they made so then apparently the sims was repackaged they snapped it up real quick and made it the sims 4 instead which is why it's so faulty so rushed and why base game was so bad in its first initial release just olympus the original sims 4 prototype was in development as early as 2008 during the sims 2 era and it was intended to be an mmo various screenshots and prototype images of the project have leaked throughout the years and from these images it's pretty clear that olympus and the sims 4 are the same game despite ea claiming that they have nothing to do with each other at this stage olympus seemed to be nearing completion and was right on track for its 2014 release date and then suddenly just a year out from that date everything was scrapped. Olympus, or The Sims 4 as it had come to be known throughout development, was no longer going to be an online game, and all of the thousands of hours that Maxis had spent writing, coding, and designing the game were thrown out the window. But why on earth would they do this, and why on earth would they do it so late into the game? Well, the answer is pretty simple. <laughs> SimCity 2013. <laughs> so for those who don't know, SimCity 2013 was the fifth installment in EA's extremely popular SimCity franchise and it was a total disaster. I'm not 100% sure, I cannot tell you whether that's true or not, but I watched a video on it and I will try and find that video and pop it on screen. But if that is the case, then yes, it is literally just faulty code on faulty code. Every time they release a pack, it is more broken than the next and it's literally just broken, 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 broken. Thousand dollars worth of broken gameplay. And my only way, I made this video so long ago and I said EA needs to fix The Sims and fast and this is the only way they can do it. My only example was get a new game. I literally don't possibly see how Sims 4 could be fixed, but but let's see. Let's give them a chance. <laughs> but yes, my final thoughts are honestly, it just seems like they don't care. It's no longer about what Sims fans want or what's best for the franchise, but rather what's best financially and for the company. I personally can see The Sims failing, but that's okay. I have loved The Sims forever, but I'm also welcome to the idea of a new life sim taking the wheel or even multiple life sims.
Play The Sims or ditch it as soon as a new game comes out. Maybe you'll ditch The Sims 4 but choose to play a Sims spinoff. In general, I think Life Sims are going in a great direction for fans with possible spinoffs and indie games on the horizon. I don't think the decision to can The Sims 5 is good for EA or Sims longevity, but it will be okay for fans. If you're over The Sims or want The Sims 5, I heavily recommend looking into games like Paralives or Inzoi and supporting them instead. I'd love to know your opinion in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think of video commentary videos in the comments below. I had a lot of fun writing this. I had a lot of fun filming it and I'm sure I'll have some fun editing it. And I do really enjoy doing different videos like this that are more talking based, my opinion and discussing it with you guys. So let me know if you guys like this kind of idea. I'm thinking of doing every Saturday doing like kind of an experimental video where we do some video essays or some different games to really get a grasp on what I enjoy and try to tailor YouTube to what you guys enjoy and what I enjoy as well. But yes, if you liked this video and you are interested in different games, I heavily recommend watching my video on Paralives because in that video, I talk all about everything we know about Paralives. And I think if you're interested in supporting indie alternatives, that is a great option. And I will see you all later. Bye.